It is noon. It is. Oh, black. Yeah. Tell me you love me. I need a good laugh. I'm holy water. You need a good bath. Whiskey and perfume. You had a nightcap. Now how about that? I've got a new friend. A perfect stranger. He's got a bullet with your name in the chamber. I'm finding you again. Rearranger. You feel my day. This is me singing that song right now. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Happy, Happy hump, day. hump day. What it's day is it, Rocky? Hump day. Rocky, yeah, get yeah. off your phone. Hold on, Jackie. No. Hold on. Right. Not hold Two on. Minutes. It's what is she doing? What are you doing? Somebody. It's important what I'm doing. So no, it's not. It is get very off important. The phone. Well, hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. Look um, at you, you all know, looking like a school teacher hey, today. I mm-hmm. am on my vintage. I know. My vintage dress. And as soon as you heard who we had booked today yeah. you you have not stopped talking about I this know. dress i just you it just is don't know adorable it came all the way across the pond yeah. yeah from where england right from england yeah that's that's where the pond is jackie yeah. across the pond well yeah. i don't know but you know what honestly Maybe though i would have never right. pictured you wearing this oh i really? could totally picture you right. no, it. no just, i mean just because the, her style is so eclectic you know what i mean yeah, but the, doesn't this kind of look like the school teacher, the apple? Yeah, she like, said, give I the look teacher like a school an apple, mom. Bring <laughs> the teacher, What's that little. saying? Bring the teacher an apple and get and good what? grades get or something. Oh, what? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Depends on what nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that is true nowadays. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll bite that apple. Right. <laughs> 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 All right, take that back. Uh, <laughs> no, nope, it's Okay, you know the there. only thing that I find, like, okay, so the really young kids, that obviously that's disgusting, but, mm-hmm. like, you're putting teachers who are in their 20s. Yes. Round yes. kids who yes. are, like, 17. Right. Yes. I was dating right. guys in their 20s when yes. I they weren't teachers, but, yep. yeah. I mean, I feel like, come on. And, like, and the really, 17 why is that so appalling? Don't, they, you know, they they're look doing like they're 25. Their, right. Well, and so they're exactly. doing it with each other anyway. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's like. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Obviously, well, when they're younger, yep. like, that's. This, I mean, that's just. This show and think about station any does not condone. No, we do not condone all any of that stuff. I'm just saying. The views and opinions of Rocky are. Just the yes. reason opinions of Rocky. Rocky. Yes. <laughs> I'm just saying it's no, not I mean it's true. It's not we that, understand. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's and and right. honestly, it's like mm-hmm. how do we get to the subject? I, I was just know. saying that because like, she's she wearing her apples and her school yeah. 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 Apple But I just think it's like I don't I like I see some of the things and it's like teacher caught with 17 year old student. I was like, well, he's hot. I'd probably do it too. Like, oh. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so but then the teacher's only like, what, 22? Yeah, and that's the thing. They're so close like, in age. It, and yeah. it's like, it's, it's the, what about the 11 year old, 12 year old? Here's well, the thing. That's, that's, that's so effed up on a whole other level. Yeah. And no, yeah. but like, to me, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I was old school. I waited until I was much older to lose my virginity and all that stuff. So I think any kid diddly in each other well, is like screwed up you know what i mean i never lost my i have five kids i had an immaculate you have five immaculate conception kids yes. wow. thank you very much wow. yeah i know See, i knew you were crazy. holy yeah. <laughs> the dress yeah oh sorry oh uh, so okay anyway. we oh. know what today is today yes. yes right on a more serious note yeah yeah so um we were we were talking about this and we we 
every each one of us we want to share where we were mm-hmm. when when you know the towers came down and mm-hmm. and you know Kalisha her daughter um, Amaya she was probably not quite a year I don't think and I was babysitting that day and I was getting ready to go somewhere and I was getting her in her little baby seat mm-hmm. and she was sitting in front of the TV while I was running trying to get stuff. And I just happened to see the towers go down on, you know, and I hadn't heard anything before that. I just happened to look at the TV and I saw the towers go down and mm-hmm. I was like, is that a movie? You know, that I yeah. thought it was a movie. Yeah. And then when they started saying stuff, it was like I just froze. Yeah. So I was kind of stuck. I've stuck in that time. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I remember I was, well, you were in school mm-hmm. and I, John Paul was at home mm-hmm. and we only watched Barney, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I didn't even know anything you was happening. Know. My friend called me and okay. she goes, you need to turn on the news mm-hmm. right now. And I was like, oh, we're watching Bernie. Mm-hmm. She goes, no, you, like, right now. Did, so yeah. I did, and that was it. Yeah. I yes. was in Mrs. Schultz class, and I don't remember much about my childhood. Like, I, and we've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. I, for some reason, just don't remember things. Mm-hmm. And I remember that day. And I remember sitting in class, and I, again, like, I only remember this part of this. And There was an announcement made that the football game had been canceled because of a plane crash. And I thought Mm -hmm. in my four, you know, whatever, fourth grade brain, a plane crashed on the field. Field, And that's why they couldn't have a game because why else would? Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't even fathom like Mm -hmm. something like that, you know, would be a thing, you know. So in my little brain, I pictured a little tiny plane crashing on the football field. Mm -hmm. And that's why we couldn't Mm -hmm. have a game, Mm -hmm. you know. And then she pulled us out early and I was like, this is so weird. Mm -hmm. What's going on? You know, and you think you picked me up and then we went to get Olivia and Mm -hmm. then you explained to me in the car what had yeah. happened were a lot of people le- a lot of kids leaving yes. early yeah people yeah. were getting called down to yeah. the office left and right yeah. and it was like yeah. really crazy parents were mm-hmm. everywhere and like yeah and the teachers were all you know talking amongst yeah, themselves everybody and was scared because yeah. i mean you didn't know if it was going to hit someplace right. yeah. else you know right where you were, yeah it so. was really it was really crazy yeah yeah but um <sighs> so i can't believe it's been 18 years yeah, i know it doesn't years, feel like 18 years so that's crazy yeah. we actually went to the 9-11 memorial that's yeah, how I know we you were guys in were. Yeah. yeah and it was unbelievable yeah mm-hmm. it was it was unbelievable i was actually just texting my friend uh so i when i went back in january i went back to the 9-11 memorial because oh just, did you yep oh i didn't and know uh, we didn't do the tour but uh-huh. we went to ground zero mm-hmm. and saw yeah. the memorial and stuff and i was actually that's who i was texting was my friend i'm not going to name his name because i didn't get permission but um he's in new york yeah he's born and raised in new york and he and i, I filmed him telling his story about his experience at because he was really little he, mm-hmm. i think he was in like second grade or something and his mom worked two buildings over from the 9-11 so she witnessed the planes i'm like literally getting chills just talking about it oh, wow but she witnessed the planes crashing Funny. and it yeah, is she did yeah and it was it and you know the New Yorkers that I know, yeah. and that you know, were part of everything. It is right. so like you know, even Tommy when right. we we talked to him about it, he yep. he said it, it is truly a day they will never mm, forget. Right, and they, you know, he talked about his experience, but um, my friend's experience who lives there, he, um, you know, from his perspective, his mom worked. She saw the first tower. Get hit. They evacuated their buildings wow. um, because they didn't know. They didn't know if it was a. They assumed mm. it was an accident. They mm-hmm. didn't know. And then the second tower hit, and it was you know obviously like became apparent what was happening and just the things that she witnessed because she she walked out of her building. There's debris everywhere. You can't really see mm-hmm. two feet in front of you, and all of a sudden like people are falling. Mm. And um, so she uh, was like frozen, and somebody she d- doesn't still to this day didn't know they grabbed her and pulled, and pulled her in a car yeah and wow. so there's four wow. strangers sitting in this car waiting for wow it just to be over mm-hmm. you know and so um now where was your friend he so like he, daycare or? yeah he mm. was like in school and so his uncle pulled him out of school okay. like you know i think he you know he was little and and, and um his everyone in that area was evacuated mm-hmm. so they were i think they were evacuated I can't remember where he said exactly. It was either Brooklyn or like one of the mm-hmm. boroughs, you know. So they were evacuated, but all the phone lines were down. Mm-hmm. So they he didn't know whether his mom 
was, was alive for, oh, like, yeah. for days yeah. after mm-hmm. until finally they got a call mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you know she mm-hmm. went to a cousin's house and they were able to make yeah because they they closed everything off they right? closed everything and then you couldn't get yeah. in or out so. wow. yeah. yeah well yeah, and it's that's... crazy now too so i you know I, I asked him you know um like what like if that were to happen today like what would happen he mm. said well they moved you know they have a base and so he, they you know if a plane flies too mm-hmm. low they'll call they, you know they yeah. make they get one warning and if they don't they send fighter jets yeah. out and the and they jets move them mm-hmm. so i thought that was really crazy wow mm-hmm. it's just I, I don't know. It's just amazing. Every yeah. time I makes me emotional. Think about like, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, how could yeah. you not be? Yeah. You right. Know? So. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, oh gosh. Yeah. Well, well the one thing too that blows me away about New Yorkers is their the resilience. Yeah. You know, oh, they were like, we're gonna go back and we're gonna, you know, right. we're not gonna like this isn't mm-hmm. gonna right. hang us up. Like, you know, we're never gonna forget, but we'll right. we'll persevere through anything. And right. that kind of mentality, I think, sets the tone for yeah. Well, I watched so a little much. bit of it on TV this morning, and it, they had a lot of the um, children that are older now oh. reading the names. Mm. So mm, that gosh. was even sadder. Yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Well, well I know we're uh, talking about uh, this right now, but I do want to move over. So, you know, this time of year, kids are back in school. Fall's coming. Yes. Yes. And it's here. Yes, mm-hmm. it is upon us. But one thing that I know for me personally, and I think I talked to you guys about this, is that I know that, tri- like, you know, I, I've, t- I've been very open about my mental health issues mm-hmm. on the show. And I've tracked it, <laughs> you know, over the years. And f- for some reason, the season's changing. Mm-hmm. Both spring and summer set off my depression. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there is a thing. And everyone in Michigan knows that you. everyone has the winter blues. You know, and they talk about that. But mm-hmm. seasonal affective disorder is yeah, a thing. Yeah, I just looked it up. Yes, yeah. that's oh, an I actual it thing. Too. It is. Um, I hmm. don't think that's what my problem is. But mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I did kind of, you know, just because this time, you know, I'm like, I started taking my medication because I've been doing so well. You know, I yeah. backed it off to like every other day or every couple of days. Mm-hmm. But now I'm like back on it every day, making sure I don't fall off the wagon here. Um, but I did do a little research. If you do get seasonal blues Mm -hmm. like I do just some little things that you can do to navigate around that and one of the things they said is because the daylight you know Mm -hmm. affects a lot of people upping your vitamin D you know if you don't take a vitamin D supplement Mm -hmm. to start incorporating that Um, Mm -hmm. and then the other thing was to get outside Um, you know just go to a cider mill go to whatever Mm -hmm. go skiing Mm -hmm. skating whatever in the winter and then the other thing, w- my f- personal favorite was snack on dark chocolate. Uh, oh, <laughs> are you <laughs> sure really? that's not on there? It I was bet not you there. You it, was the, it was one of the natural <laughs> things you can do. Really? Did you read that in the Daily Mail? <laughs> no, I, I looked at it. It came up in Her a couple science. different. <laughs> and yeah, 100%. But, uh, no, it came up in a couple different things. Well, And dark chocolate is good for you. It has right. antioxidants, right. blah, blah, blah. Right. It's actually... You know, right. It is actually, but you know, in small amounts, not the amount I eat, but you but, know, <laughs> but you were just saying, you know, get out more and just, yeah, you know, yeah. but see, that's the thing. It's like, you know, cause I'll, I'll, if it's gloomy, yeah, that it's makes me out. not want to go even more, yeah, right. you know, no, so right, same it's way. like, right. yeah. And then if yeah. it's rainy, oh, you can forget it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Especially right, right. if I don't have to be right. anywhere. I'm not, yeah. I'm not right. going out. So yeah. what are you going to do? Well, I'm yeah. definitely, mm-hmm. I think, I mean, I'm she's going to eat some chocolate. Well, yeah. I mean, I put. Mocha and my coffee <laughs> yeah. already. I've already got my daily dose. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Uh, no, well, I mean, I've been working out a lot more. So keeping on that, that right? That does feel really good out with that. It's been, yeah, so that's I'm another very thing they said. Um, I have been meditating a lot more. That was another thing hmm. that they said. So I think I'm on. I'm going to be fine this year. Good. Honestly. That's great. So. I know you're going to be fine. Yeah. 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 You know, it's. I think being aware is like, yeah, ninety percent right. of the problem is that's like true. when you realize, okay, all right, this time of year is coming up. You gotta mm-hmm. take right. extra care, you know. Well, that's good. Extra though. TLC. Yeah, that's yeah. good yeah. that you track it and you know. Yeah. Um, so that, so that you can plan it. for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. So. Um, well, speaking of uh, Tommy in New York, um, he's going to be on our show. I know. He told me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm nervous. <laughs> I know. I'm I t- nervous. I you are not. Are this. you? Yes. Oh, oh yeah. She's Listen, so scared of him. I'm She'll s- camp out here, <laughs> even though he's calling in. I know. <laughs> I'm not kidding. There's two people that scare me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's this one over here. Uh-huh. 
J Dog. Yeah, she's supposed I know, to. Dude, she no. scares the <laughs> shit out of me. Okay, and Tommy. Yeah, true. Okay. Those two. Anytime, like, she, well, I'm gonna take that as a compliment. Listen, uh-huh. I'm, I'm at Tommy's yeah. level there. Yeah. Let me tell you something. When she calls me, I could be doing nothing wrong. Yeah, you like, grab I could that be phone, doing, don't and you? And I look. Well, no, I like look, and I'm like, all right, turn the music down. Yeah. Shh. What am nobody I doing? talk. I look at my dog. I'm like, don't make noise. <laughs> Mom's calling. <laughs> You're usually doing something wrong. No, I'm really kidding. <laughs> well, no, she's normally like, dude, really, you're not doing anything tonight. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. Go do something yeah. wrong, please. Have fun. Yeah. Yes, so will so you wear anyway. your wig to New York? No. Or wait for the interview. Phone interview. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I did get permission though that I don't have to wear it all the time. Oh, and actually, good. I need a replacement. Mm. Mine is so bad; it's so gross, and it does not lay flat anymore. So, <laughs> I need a replacement. So I've your hair looks so good at the Arts Beats and Eats. Yeah, it was, it was beautiful. She's got beautiful the other thing hair. Because like, I. You know, I like to rock out. I know. So it's like and with my wig on, I'm always so afraid it's gonna like right. fall off, or like it's gonna start just like shifting a little bit. You know, because like, they will. Yeah, yeah. Well, that like, would be funny. You know, now it's that like, would be a great show. Well, you know, and then honestly, I was I've always been so nervous about it. And then when Cardi B ripped her wig off oh, on, yeah. on stage, I was yeah. like, oh, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Cardi B can take hers off, but oh, everybody yeah. knows it's a, little, a wig. You know? It's a wig yeah. wig culture now. So if it falls off, it's like you just keep going. Right. Like you know what the heck. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I always make sure my hair looks cute underneath. Like, I always yeah. braid mm-hmm. it, you know, so it looks. Yeah. So just if it does case. come off, you yeah. know what I mean? It's not going to look like. Cause sometimes I just shove it in there and it's like it comes off. And like, oh. <laughs> but, oh, boy. All right. We've got an exciting show here I today. Know. I'm so excited. Yay. Yes. Let's get uh, going here. If you want to do the read. Come on, Wear the headphones <laughs> so you know what's going on. I'll do it right after that. It's done. <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. It's Mom, are you there? Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear. <laughs> All right, guys. You are listening to The Nooner Show. We appreciate your support, and we hope you get inspired to take a leap of faith. Don't forget to subscribe to The Nooner Show wherever you listen to podcasts. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram at The Nooner Show. Our show today is sponsored by The Parlor in Hadley, Michigan. It is a pizza Ria, where pizza rocks. Um, let's see here. And we are also sponsored by the makers of Dope Water. If you can be anything, why not be dope? Yeah. This segment is designed to showcase the stories of talented individuals who had a wish and found a way to make it happen. They set goals, overcame obstacles, and turned setbacks into comebacks. Their stories are unique, interesting, and most of all, inspiring. For many people, the idea of figuring out what you're meant to do in this life can be a struggle. The phrase, find your purpose, can seem like an unachievable concept. According to the many notable motivational gurus, purpose is often discovered through passion. For business owner Nikki Nushal, did I say that right? I got it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This could not be more true. This native Texan lover... Or loved to shop and dress in vintage clothing, realizing one day that her collection had gotten so big she made the decision to turn her passion into profits. She and her husband relocated to Detroit and opened a brick-and-mortar store called Flamingo Vintage. The beautiful store opened its doors earlier this year. The store offers a mixture of men and women's clothing as well as furniture and home decor. In an era where there's a movement for authenticity and individuality, Nikki's enthusiasm and knowledge has already earned Flamingo Vintage a reputation for being one of the most top sto- shop stores in Detroit. Welcome to the Nooner Show. Hey. Thank Woo. you. Thanks like, for having me. Oh, like I said bef- before we started the show, these guys were so excited. Oh. Nora's like, <laughs> I have a vintage dress I'm going to wear. I got it in yes. London. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, congratulations yeah. on the Thank store you. opening. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Pretty recent. You said you had yes. the soft opening in yep. December and then yep. an official launch like three months ago. Yep, exactly. And how's it going so far? Things are going really well. Yeah, things mm. are going well. So let's start off with what is vintage clothing? It, is it different than secondhand like explain that a little bit yeah so vintage clothing is technically 20 years and older so anything older than 20 years is considered to be vintage anything newer than that is resale oh Oh, okay okay Okay. yeah and so yours is vintage like everything you find and you sell is all of it's old 
Really? <laughs> all, it's all, all of it. it. So, <laughs> all of it. Nothing and new. Look, look at how the, how excited she is. I know. It's too. all old. Um, yeah. Well, take us back how, you know, because we read the story that your your wardrobe had mm-hmm. gotten so big you decided to, well, let's just open up a business. We'll go from Texas to Detroit and do it there. Yeah. Um, but I know your husband was is from Detroit yep, originally, yep, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. So... Um, besides wearing the clothing, did you work at a at a vintage boutique? Were you how, in that How did business? it all start? The, yeah. the vintage okay. in you. So I guess, gosh, how far should we go back? This has kind of been unraveling my whole life, or mm-hmm. coming together my entire life. I guess is a better way to put it, right? So, in middle school, I always wanted to go to thrift stores. I always mm-hmm. wanted to buy secondhand. I never wanted to go to the mall. I really? Was never, yeah. I was always into it, right? So where where do you think that came from? Was it did you see something on TV? Because that's no. where I I got no. it from. I watch TV shows. Nobody in my family wanted to wear used wow. clothes. There was a costume shop mm-hmm. um, down the street from us, and I used to just walk through all the racks and look at the old petticoats. <laughs> really, wow. nobody really like led me to that. Mm-hmm. I wish that they would have. I don't know. I just that was the only thing that I was really drawn to. Right. And then in high school, I took a job working at Forever 21 in the mall. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I just started to like <laughs> look at the seams uh-huh. unraveling and how they never steam anything and quality <laughs> is just horrible. And I was like, oh, yeah. what am I doing? Yeah. 